Welcome to another Stamp with Amy K YouTube Live. And today I'm going to show you a fun card that I made with the Gumball Greetings uh, stamp set bundle. This is in the new January to June mini catalog, or 2022 mini catalog, I should say, from Stampin' Up. Um, so it'll be available. I'm sorry, I'm scooching my, uh, <laughs> scooching things around a little bit, trying to make sure that I'm fairly centered and um, like I said, on the screen where I want to be. <laughs> Every time I go live, I swear it's a little different and how, how it decides it wants to be. Um, and I'm trying out some new lighting, a new lighting option. So I'm hoping that um, it's not going to cause me any trouble. It, it's a little different setup. So if it does and I bang into the lights, I apologize. I just have things sitting in a little different place. So uh, thanks so much for joining today. If you are here, hey Jeannie, I'm glad you're joining today live. So this is definitely one of those fun stamp sets. And um, it's a, you can make little shaker cards with it. Now, obviously you don't have to, if you don't like the shaker part um, and don't wanna to have to do that, you can definitely still use it just as is. It's a great stamp set, but you know, you can stamp just the, the image from the gumball machine. But I wanted to show you how to assemble everything today. So I decided I was gonna go ahead and do a shaker card with it. Now I will tell you that once I got it kinda, of, well, the shaker part all done and put together, I realized I probably got a little overzealous with filling it. <laughs> need to put quite as many of the the little shaker beads in it as I did today um, but anyway I'll try to not to fill it quite so full the with the next one so you can see how it looks but like I said I think I got a little carried away filling it <laughs> but anyway it was too cute and I could not so all right so this is the card we're going to be making today again um, it's there are lots of little pieces in the die set uh, they're not really very difficult to figure out what fits together but I'm just going to show you how I did everything um, as it is so I see Karen is here and Debbie and Pamela and Lori and Barbara and Mary Lee and Elaine and Jeans thanks everybody for hopping in and uh, saying hello all right, so that's what we're making. Um, we'll start with the stamp set. This is the Gumball Greetings stamp set, and it's a really cute one. I mean, it's just, it's got some fun little images in it. Um, one nice thing about the die sets that goes with this is that it actually is designed to cut out the gumballs grouped together, uh, the little hearts grouped together, and then whatever those, I don't know, are those chiclets or whatever those thing, licorice pieces, whatever those are, um, you can cut two of those out together so it stamps and then you can directly cut it. So it's one of those that it, they make it easy for you so you don't have to cut each individual little gumball out. So, um, hey Mary, I'm glad that you are joining today from the beautiful Finger Lakes. Is it cold up there? That's north, way north, isn't it? I think that's where it is, and I may be totally wrong, <laughs> but uh, hopefully you're not freezing today. It's it's kind of actually warmed up, but it's really dark and dreary out, but that's okay. So it's winter. We have to expect that. Um, so these are the coordinating uh, gumball machine dies, and uh, there are this die um, actually is designed to cut out, it'll cut out both the stamped image, obviously the stamped on the front of the stamp case is smaller than it actually is, but it will cut out the stamped image as well as it'll just cut, like I did on this one, I just cut layering pieces directly from the cardstock without stamping it at all and um, just cut the layers out with it. So, um, but, uh, well, I'm glad that you are wanting to see this. Hopefully, you know, I'll convince you to buy it because it's a really cute set. <laughs> so, hey, Mary, glad you're joining from Canton, Georgia as well. Um, watching a little football today. How nice. All right, I haven't had the TV on in forever so I don't even know what games are on I'm assuming it must be college probably UGA game on today or something so all right so this um, die cut actually cuts out um, this little gumball set or like I said it'll cut out the stamped one as well um, this one cuts out the little stamped image here uh, this actually cuts out um, and embosses hopefully you can see the embossing on there um, on that I did with a foil sheet here so 50 degrees today. It's warm here too. It's all, I think it's almost 50 as well. All right, so this is the die set, and I'm going to show you each of the little pieces and how I use them um, to assemble mine. Now, again, you don't have to use all the little tiny pieces if you don't want to. I just thought it added a little extra and thought it was really cute with everything, so I'm going to show you how I used it. Um, oh, you had to get, yeah, I had so much trouble, but finally got, oh, oh, well, Finally got to the site. Oh, sorry, Diane. Sorry you were having trouble finding me on uh, on uh, YouTube. So, all right. So here we are. Um, this is what we're going to be using today: stamps and dies. And also, I have the tailor-made tags dies, and I use that to cut out this little sentiment. And I'll show you um, as I'm doing it. It's really not very difficult how you can trim down the tag to make it be a little shorter because I didn't really need it to be that big, huge tag on the card front. Um, so I just trimmed it down, and I'll show you how I did that once we get working on the card as well. 
A couple things before we get going. The last chance sale and uh, retiring products from Stampin' Up! They are going to be going away very, very soon, like Monday, which is kind of shocking to me. So our current June to December mini catalog with all the holiday things in it and Halloween and all that, um, most of that catalog is actually retiring and going away, and a lot of it's sold out already. So make sure you're getting on and getting anything you want from that catalog purchased before it all goes away here on the 3rd of January. Um, and Eden's Garden is another thing. The collection is only available until the 3rd of January while supplies last as well. Um, so the stamp set and bundle, which is the Eden's Garden stamp set and the Eden dies, are actually going to be available in the upcoming mini catalog. But the beautiful uh, Ever Eden paper and the cotton specialty paper and the garden gems are only while supplies last through the 3rd. Um, you can get the entire collection as well with just one number or you can buy everything individually however you want to do it. Um, but again, just make sure you're getting that order put in by the 3rd. And then the last thing I wanted to share is I do have my January to June 2022 mini catalog designer series paper shares um, that the signups are happening now and I'll be ordering as quickly as I can on the 4th of January. And actually the designer paper that we're using today is from Celebration and you're going to get a little sampling of that um, if you join my paper share. So the details are on my blog. So take a peek out there, which is stampwithamyk.com. Um, so take a peek out there. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, after all the talking, I am going to go ahead and uh, get started on this. So I did pre-cut um, the basic pieces of the gumball machine ahead of time and cut some of the papers and things. So um, this was cut from real red cardstock, and as I'm doing it, I should probably show you which dies I use. So this large die is the one that I used to cut this piece with. And then I'm gonna place this in here just because I wanna make sure that I'm placing, placement wise and cutting wise, I'm putting this in the right spot on my paper. And then I also had put the little top or cap or whatever you wanna call it. I'd cut that from real red cardstock as well. Um, so did I cut this to the right side? I did, okay. Just making sure that I hadn't messed it up already. So, okay, when you're cutting out the gumball machine, Notice this die, which is the one that cuts like the, I don't know, the glass part of the machine. This die is actually a little bit narrower at the top and a little wider at the bottom. So make sure that when you're using it to cut things, that's how you're using it. Make sure that the top is the narrow, the bottom is the wide. All right, so I'm gonna take these little die cuts off. I just sort of put them on here for placement wise. I wanted to make sure that I was gonna be cutting this in the right place. So I'm gonna leave my this die cut here and I'm going to take a little pencil and just mark kind of right here along the top so I know generally when I go to put it through my die cutting machine that I know that I'm going to have it in the right place <laughs> and that was really all that I did for the uh, you know as far as the the pencil line that was the only reason I put it on there is just making sure that I had it in the right spot for my die cutting so I'm going to take this to my die cutting machine this is a piece of I totally forgot to tell you this is sunshine and rainbows designer series paper which is one of the celebration papers and it's a really cute one so this is one you can get for free with an order of $50 or greater it's a big pack of paper 48 sheets um, six by six pieces of designer paper. This one's cut to about three and three quarter, or three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. Hopefully I'll get the numbers right. It'll all be on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. Um, so all the details will be out there tomorrow and I will share a link directly to the project once the blog post goes live. So trust what I put in the blog post and not what comes out of my mouth because sometimes I don't say them all right. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna be off screen for a second um, to my die, my die cutting machine is over here to my right. And again, I'm just gonna run this through the die cutting machine, making sure that I've got my pencil marks lined up and um, cut a hole in the designer paper. All right. Is anybody doing anything exciting for New Year's Eve? We are not New Year's Eve people here. Uh, we are pretty much barely can stay awake until the ball drops kind of people. <laughs> so. Now, we've never really been big on New Year's Eve. It's one of those things where I just am like, Ugh, it's not worth the, <laughs> you know, fighting all the crazy people out there and all the drunk people and all that sort of thing. So um, if you are doing something exciting, feel free to share because we're not. <laughs> so, all right, so I've got this piece cut. Next, I'm going to grab the gumball machine shaker domes, and there are 10 of these in a pack, and they come packaged like all of our little shaker domes do. They're inside of a little plastic bag inside a box, so they're pretty well protected. 
Oh man, you're you're. Ugh. I know so many people. My brother and his whole family are all sick with it right now too. So ugh, it is definitely going around. So feel better soon. Um, goodness, sorry to hear that, Barb. So never make it to midnight. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that usually wakes me up here around the midnight time frame is the dog because people start shooting off fireworks and you know so then we got to deal with that so um, the one nice thing about our shaker domes is they actually have adhesive on both sides of them so I just peeled off the little cover for this side and all you do is place it right in here on your designer paper so it just fits through the opening perfectly. There's a little bit of adhesive that's gonna be exposed at the top and the bottom, but you're gonna be covering it with the die cut pieces. So that is perfectly fine. All right, now I'm gonna flip this over and fill with some of these frosted bead. They're called, it's frosted bead assortment is what it's called. And they do look just like little gumballs. And I'm gonna fill it up here. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, I will try not to go quite as crazy as I did. I kept looking like, oh, that doesn't look like enough. That doesn't look like enough. And I kept adding more and adding more and adding more. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I think that's too many, <laughs> which I don't know. Hopefully I won't do it again. All right. So I think I'm going to stop in hopes that I didn't way overfill it again. Okay. Now the next piece, if you are not, if you're assembling this and are not doing it as a shaker um, and are not planning to stamp, what I did was stamped the um, kind of gumball jar image on a piece of basic white cardstock. I've tried to figure out, could I make it actually stick on here without having to hold it up in the air and hope that I got it placed right and try to look through the shaker dome and whatever. Um, and then I realized, you know, we have these window sheets. <laughs> How about if I just cut a piece of window sheet and stick it over this, and then that will hold all the little shakery pieces inside it, and then I can just um, stamp and adhere the basic white panel underneath it, and nobody's going to know that um, I stuck a window sheet in there to hold everything in place to make it easy on myself. So, all right, so that is what I did. The window sheet is cut to about uh, two and a quarter by about two and a half. It's, I don't know, I didn't really do a precise cutting job on it, but around that size should fit over it. And then I'm going to peel off the backing on the, oh, the other side of my uh, shaker dome here. And then I'm just going to take my window sheet and I'm going to stick it right over the sticky part. So I can flip it over and that's actually going to hold all my little shaky pieces inside the card. So then I can maneuver this around as many times as I need to and, you know, do whatever I need to do with it without having to worry that everything's gonna come, the little gumball pieces are gonna come flying out. So, uh, midnight is catnip time or for your cat, so yeah. <laughs> so, we all have our, you know, pet issues, I know. <laughs> so, all right. So, next up, I have got the uh, gumball jar image uh, that I'm gonna be stamping here uh, in Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And again, the, I cut the piece of basic white to about the same size as I cut the um, piece of window sheet so that um, they will hopefully, oh, I almost dropped my stamp set, or my stamp. Um, so hopefully they'll line up fairly reasonably, but it's okay if they don't line up perfectly. And again, that was part of the reason why I did it this way is so that if it didn't all line up perfectly, that was okay. Because you know, as long as I got this stamped in a way um, that you could see it, through the, the shaker part, that's all that matters. All right, so Tuxedo Black Memento Ink, basic white cardstock. Then I'm gonna take a little stamp and seal. And again, you can use, if you prefer liquid glue, you can definitely use that. Um, I prefer stamp and seal, uh, but that's just me because I make a mess with liquid glue and I only use it kind of when I have to. All right, so I've got just a little, little bits of stamp and seal that I've stuck around it. And then I'm gonna take this and hopefully I'll be able to see through. I may have to stand up here a second. And I'm gonna line it up so that you can see sort of the jar stamping. And I'm gonna just stick it to the back of this. So again, hopefully you can see it when I hold it that way, um, that you can see the little jar edges and the little you know, kind of shiny part underneath it. And again, this is just sort of a, an easy way to layer it up so that you don't have to worry about, you know, even though I'm putting it on a larger piece of basic white cardstock, I still took another smaller piece of basic white cardstock just to make it easy to line up. Because if you don't do that, then you have to stress out and try to figure out exactly where do I stamp it on this, the bigger panel and whatever. And I know it's a little extra cardstock, but to me it was well worth it rather than trying to wrestle with it and figure out where to stamp it exactly on the, the paper. Because you could cut the hole in it and then trace it and then try to stamp it and then try to erase it. But lazy me just said, just put another piece of cardstock under it. <laughs> so um, I've got a piece of basic white cardstock that I'm gonna layer this on. 
The basic white should be cut to about three and three quarters by five. Um, so hopefully I've cut everything to the right size and it'll all fit together the way it should. Woo! All right, line that up and stick it together. Hopefully, line it up. All right, there we go. And just gonna make sure that it's sealed well along the edge. That was the only thing I wanted to make sure that I caught the designer series paper because this is a little thicker over here um, with the, the shaker dome on it. So I wanted to make sure that I had that um, stuck down well. All right, then we're gonna start assembling our little gumball machine. So I have got this little piece of, did I put a little, okay, I do have a little extra piece here that I can use, okay. Um, so this is the base of it, and I don't know if you can see it very well, but underneath here, oh, I actually did red in there. Did I know? Oh, I know what I did. <laughs> so, all right, so the die cuts, maybe I should start with that, and then uh, this will make a little more sense, hopefully. So the die cut pieces that I used, I've got, and then there's one little teeny weeny one. So from the dies, this is the larger one. This one is the one that cuts out this piece and it actually gives you like this piece and then there are two that go along the side. And then there's this piece, that is that one. This piece, that is this one. And then the little teeny tiny piece is this one. And then we've got the top to it is here. So those are all of the pieces to assemble the red part of the little um, gumball machine that I did here. So um, I started to tell you, oh, did you notice, uh, anyway, that I've got red behind here. So I took, this piece would normally just be something you would toss and scrap and whatever. I don't know if you noticed, but this actually opens up and lifts so you can see inside the little gumball machine. And I wanted it to be red inside too, because um, I, I don't know, it could have, I could have left it and, and had the designer series paper showing through, but I didn't like that look necessarily. I wanted it to be red. So I took this, just trimmed it down, hacked it off with the paper snips, Add a little bit of stamp and seal around the edges here. And again, this isn't something that needs to have a ton of adhesive to hold it in place um, because, oh, there we go, keep rolling, um, because it's just a little, little piece of paper. <laughs> so, and again, it's just covering, the only thing you wanna do is make sure that it's covering the opening. All right, so I've got that adhered. So now all you see is red when you open it up, which is kind of the look that I wanted. All right, and if I didn't tell you to start with, this video is gonna take us a few minutes longer than my typical ones do, so feel free to you know take a break and get a drink, of <laughs> whatever you need to do, uh, just because this is, you know, it's a little, there are a lot of pieces on this one, so it's gonna take a few minutes longer uh, to get everything assembled. And I'm using multi-purpose liquid glue. If you think ahead further than I did, you can definitely use the adhesive sheets on this one. The only thing with the adhesive sheets is that once you stick them down, they are gonna stay where you stick them. So that's the one good thing about the multi-purpose liquid glue is that that gives you a little bit of um, sort of wiggle time. So if you don't get it lined up exactly perfectly, um, your, the uh, liquid glue gives you a minute to kind of make sure that it's, it's where you want it to be. All right, so I've got that put down and I am gonna grab my little tweezers here just because I find it a little bit easier when everything is covered in glue to um, you know, not have to handle it and stick my fingers hopefully in the glue. So when you're lining this one up, make sure that you're missing the door. So make sure you got it above the door. And then these two little parts, hopefully you can see it if I hold it up here a second. So there are little notches right in here and this should run so that they're basically right underneath the little notches. All right, so hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you can see it on here. So the, the top layer is it kind of, the corner should match up right about where those notches are. All right, and I can see I got a little overzealous. This is why I try not to use liquid glue because I, <laughs> I make a mess. So, all right, so I've got that done and we're gonna take this and we're gonna adhere it to the, the little piece of the card here. Oh, you know what, actually, before I do that, there is a little slot in here and we are gonna be um, trying to stick as much of the little coin in there as we can later on. So I'm gonna just make sure that this is open and I'm gonna use my little take your pick tool and just sort of, again, just slide it in there, make sure that the, the slide is open enough so that it's, I can slide the edge of the coin in there. All right, so I'm, again, I'm gonna take liquid glue and try not to get too much on there like I did earlier and put it around the edges. And then I'm gonna adhere it right up here underneath my shaker. So that's gonna cover up the spot where the, the kind of 
the adhesive part is sticking out. And I'm gonna give that a second to, to hold. Um, then we have this little piece, which actually fits perfectly right along the bottom of your gumball machine. So again, just gonna take liquid glue and adhere it. So I do need to use the adhesive sheets, I know. <laughs> so I, yeah, I just didn't plan it and I got everything all cut. And again, I did that, I do it all the time where I get it all cut out and then I cut out the second one for, for um, the video and I get it all done and I'm assembling and I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> this would have been a good one for adhesive sheets. So again, I'm gonna take this and gonna stick it right down here. It fits pretty much perfectly right along the bottom. And whoop, there, see, I've got my globo glue because I'm a messy gluer. All right, and I am gonna, I do have a glue eraser that I will come back after the fact and clean up all my glue globbers um, so I won't hand it out looking like that. <laughs> so, um, how to use the shaker with the slider piece? Yeah, I don't know. I have never made one with the slider piece in it. So, um, I'm sure there's probably a video somewhere along the line that, you know, somebody could show you, but I just don't know. <laughs> so, all right. So, this is the little top of the, um, the gumball. I was going to say shaker. That's not, well, it is technically the top of the shaker. And then here's the little piece that fits along the bottom of the top. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, fits along right underneath. And again, just gonna take my little tweezers and hopefully stick it down and try not to have glue stuck to everything. And again, it fits on there. It looks almost like a little um, winter hat to me at this point. <laughs> That's what I thought of as a, oh, it looks sort of like a little stocking hat. All right, then I need to find my little teeny tiny piece. And again, this one is very kind of fiddly. Um, it's very little. And if you don't put it on, it's not the end of the world, but it does add just sort of a little extra, hopefully you can see it on here, just a little extra layer above it. And um, so if you don't wanna add it, you don't have to add it, but <laughs> I thought it looked kinda cute and we have a die for it, so I figured I might as well go ahead. So when I did it, I actually thought it was easier to put the glue on the larger piece for this one and then stick my little die cut piece to it, hopefully with my tweezers here. Uh, whoops, and there I dropped it. So that didn't work out like I'd planned it. Making sure that I've got it in the right orientation. And then just stick that right to the top, like that. So then you've got your little top to the shaker. Oh, I flipped it over too. <laughs> all ready to go. The glue is sticking to my fingers, so. All right, I'm gonna take that and adhere it to the card front as well. Again, just using a little bit of liquid glue. Let me get this flipped over. Try not to stick my fingers in everything. Maybe. And I'm just gonna take that, slide it over the top of the shaker, and then adhere it down there. All right, so that's basically, you're almost done assembling your gumball machine at this point. The next thing that I did was I cut a piece of silver foil sheets. Um, this is kind of the darker of the three sheets that are in there, so I don't know, I don't know what color it's supposed to be. It's the darker of the three. So um, I could use a toothpick, but I'd probably end up with the toothpick stuck all over the place. <laughs> so I'd, I've tried all sorts of different things and I'm just not very good with liquid glue. But if it works for you, definitely do it. I'm just not very good at it. Um, so a glue eraser is, um, they sell them on Amazon and it's basically just what it sounds like. If you have, if you're using liquid glue and you end up with glubers, that's what I call them, where you got glue that's globbed out places. Yeah, it's a little, um, here, I'll show you. I, I don't know if I had it in reach, um, but it's a little square and basically you just can rub it along and it picks up the glue and rolls it into a little ball and then neatly takes it off without destroying your project. Um, you do, the only tip that I have when you're using those is just to make sure that the glue is completely dry. If you use it when it is um, wet at all, then you'll have Kind of a big mess. So wait till the glue dries completely. That's why I usually finish up the project and then come back and use my little glue eraser <laughs> to pick up all the goobers. Um, because yeah, like I said, you'll have a mess if you don't. All right, so I've got these two pieces that I cut from, well, I like what Jean calls it. We'll go with gunmetal. I can do that. <laughs> gunmetal gray. Um, so this is the square that it, it cuts and embosses. And then this is the little like turny thingy where you'd put the money in and then um, turn it and 
you know, then the gumball would come out. So whatever the turny thingy is. <laughs> so um, the little turn handle does have this that is die cut. It's got a hole in it already. This piece, because you don't have to use it with a little turn thing over the top of it, does not have a hole that's in it. So I just took the take your pick tool and made a hole. <laughs> so, all right. So I've got that and I'm going to layer these two one over the top of the other. And then I'm going to grab one of the round and square brads. I thought the round ones looked better in it. I did put a square one in initially um, just to see what it looked like and it was too big, I thought. So I went with one of the round ones um, and I went with the black one, but if you like the white ones, you can definitely do that. Um, whatever your favorite one is, just pick that one. And then stuck the two together and opened up the brad in the back and then kind of smooshed it down here so that hopefully I can get it to be somewhat secure. It doesn't need to be super, super secure because you know it's not like it's a real toy that somebody's gonna be playing with. But if you do that and use a brad with it, this actually will spin a little bit. So I thought that was kind of a cute little addition to it as well. So it is a lot of fun. I mean, it's a cute little set. So, all right, then I've got um, Stampin' Dimensionals and we're gonna adhere this. It's my little half Stampin' Dimensionals that I have chopped up here. Um, I'm gonna adhere this to the card front. And eventually we will get to a little more stamping, but there's just sort of a, a little assembly that goes with this one. Um, again, this is not probably one that you're gonna wanna make 5,000 of, but it's definitely a fun one. And um, it really doesn't take that long. I'm doing a lot of talking in between times, and if I were just working <laughs> instead of yapping, um, I probably would be done by now. So, all right, so I'm gonna take this and adhere it right on the, the front, try to get it centered um, with Stampin' Dimensionals. And again, just the only thing you want to do is make sure that you're up close to the top and then that you're able to get your little door to open if you want to be able to open the door on it. All right. Um, next up, we're going to do a little stamping on some Smoky Slate cardstock. And I have got the little, there's a little five cent um, stamp. It's supposed to look like a little nickel and my basic gray ink. And as you can see, I started and, and did it in Smoky Slate once, but I didn't think it looked... I don't know, I didn't think it was quite dark enough when I stamped it in Smoky Slate. So um, Smoky Slate cardstock, basic gray ink so that it stood out a little bit more. And there's a die for that. Um, so there's a little die right here that I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine off to my side here. And we will have our little five cents in one second. And the little five cent piece again is something that you don't need to use with it, but I just thought I added a cute little touch to it. So I wanted to, you know, show you how to use as many of the dies as I could and as many of the images as I could. So let me get my, there we go. All right. So I'm going to take a glue dot and stick it to the back of my little nickel image. And the glue dots fit pretty perfectly on the back of here. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna to try to slide it a little bit into that slot and then just adhere it sort of above the slot <laughs> to, the, to make it look like the little nickel was going down into the slot. I don't know if I was very successful at that, but that was sort of the look I was going for. <laughs> and it is, it's sort of in there, but not, not really. It's, it's a little difficult to get it put down in there too, too far, but I thought it was a cute little, cute little accent piece. Um, next up, I've got a piece of basic white, just a scrap of basic white cardstock, and goodness, I'm getting stuff everywhere. And this is a little set of three gumballs. Now, if you really wanted to, you could stamp through, you know, three different sets, but I only wanted three gumballs total when I got done with it. So I took Daffodil Delight ink and used just the corner of the ink pad, and I'm inking up one of the little gumballs, and then. Took Coastal Cabana ink, did the same thing on another little gumball. All right, well, hey, no problem, Jean. Feel free to come back and check out the replay if you want to see the end of it. But the, the difficult part's already done. It's just kind of figuring out how the die cuts work together. After that, you know, it's just a matter of assembling it and adding a sentiment if you want to. So, all right, and then I've got Granny Apple Green for the third one. And again, just using the corner of the ink pad to ink up the little gumballs. Maybe, there we go, I think I got a good image on that one. Stamping it on basic white cardstock. 
All right, looks like we got a pretty good image on all three of them. And then we're gonna use the die that coordinates with this stamp set here. This little set, or this little die, it's your set of three circles. And just gonna take that and run it through the die cutting machine. So over here off to the screen for a second. So I have patience, not really, I don't know. <laughs> not really, I don't feel like I have patience, so. I don't know, I'm kind of a speedy stamper actually, so I want to get things done quickly. And actually that was kind of what I liked about this one is that I have, we've had gumball machines quite a while ago in the past we had one and it was really a lot of work I thought. And this one, it, I thought it made it really easy. So um, now if you look at the sample in the catalog, uh, Stampin' Up! actually has glued on a bunch of these little shakery pieces, the little frosted beads. That would take more patience than I have because I just, I don't have the patience to sit and hold, <laughs> hold a little uh, gumball in place for five minutes while the um, glue dries on it. <laughs> so, and I can see already that I must have started a little bit lower down on the paper than I did on my, uh, on my sample card because these are down a little closer to the bottom. But again, glue dots fit pretty much perfectly underneath these. I'm gonna take this one and tuck it inside the door, maybe. So tuck it so that it looks like it's falling out of the little, the gumball door. And then do the third one here off to the side. There we go. All right, so there we go. We got the gumballs all done on it. So yeah, the, that, that was exactly, kids and grandkids is exactly what I, saw, I thought of when I saw all this too. So it's, it's a really cute set. So, all right. So we're done with most, oh, and I guess I could just go ahead and put it on the card front too while I'm at it and got everything out here. Um, so I'm just gonna take this and adhere it to a basic red card base. Um, card base, this one is cut to four and a quarter by 11 and um, scored at five and a half. If you prefer the book fold card, this one will definitely fit on a book fold card as well. I just didn't have one of those card bases handy. And my preferred card base is the top opening ones. Um, all right, so using a little stamp and seal. Again, if you prefer the liquid glue, you can definitely use that as well. And we're just gonna adhere it to the card front. Um, I did go directly to the card front with this because obviously this is, it's a little thicker. So this is not something you're gonna be able to, to mail with just one stamp. You'll probably have to put it in a padded envelope um, to mail it out to somebody, but it's one you could definitely hand deliver, so. All right, uh, next up, let me find, I'm starting to get things everywhere, so I'm having a hard time seeing where I put everything. So I've got my sentiment and I've got Versamark ink. And we're gonna stamp that on a piece of Coastal Cabana cardstock. And we're gonna do a little heat embossing. And I just used a little more general sentiment. It says, uh, what does this one say? May your day be, be filled with the best things. So I thought this one would be, it could be a birthday. It could be a, you know, just a happy day and uh, you know, have a good day kind of sentiment as well. Got white embossing powder and we're gonna sprinkle the card front, or the um, sentiment with white embossing powder. Do a second time over here, there we go. All right, and I'm gonna close this up before I start up my heat tool, otherwise I'll have embossing powder flying everywhere. All right, so let me bring this over. The Stampin' Up! heat tool has two settings on it. So there's a level one setting, which is for drying. So if you're gonna be doing watercoloring or something like that, and uh, want something to dry faster, you can use the level one setting. The level two setting is for heat embossing, and that's what we're doing. Sorry if I'm off screen. Um, so level two setting is for heat embossing, and it's a little hotter, um, so definitely don't want to put your fingers nearby. Um, just gonna turn it towards the uh, project here and wait for it to turn a bright, kind of shiny white, and that means that it's done cooking. There we go, it's starting to turn. And you do want to be careful with your um, heat embossing because you can definitely burn it. So once it's all kind of shiny and pretty, um, then make sure that you stop because you can, you know, like I said, you can burn it and then it turns all dull and the white one actually like turns brown if it burns. <laughs> so it's not very pretty. All right, so I've got the TaylorMade Tags dies and I'm gonna use the second, second smallest of the um, kind of squared off rectangles. And I'm gonna take this over, I'm gonna put it like this initially and run it through my die cutting machine. And then I'll bring it back and show you how I cut it off the bottom of it with the same die. So. 
maybe. Come on. Of course, it's not wanting to cooperate and stay still. There we go. If all else fails, just wrestle with it. <laughs> so. Okay, so I've got my die cut tag and I'm just gonna take my die. The one nice thing about these dies is there are these little kind of stitched look things in them and they make nice little notches. So you can basically get it to about the size that you want it, which that's about the size that I want the tag to be. And then just kind of slide it a little bit until the notches catch. And it's, it's in there pretty securely. So then I'm gonna take this over to my die cutting machine. I'm gonna roll it far enough through that it cuts the bottom of the tag and then it'll put the little stitch lines across the bottom, but not so far through that it cuts all the way up to the top. Although this die, I don't think it would matter. Some of the dies, um, when you do this technique with it, you don't wanna run it all the way through just because you can end up with a weird cut up at the top. So, all right, so hopefully that makes sense. So basically you just take it, put it over the top, get it about where you want it to be. That's a little too short, there we go. And then just find the spot where the little notches hook together at and use your fingers, hold it in there, and then run it through your die cutting machine. So it's super, super easy to cut these to whatever length it is that you want. All right, and I'm just running it about halfway through, and then I'm gonna back the machine out. And now I've got a tag that's cut down to the size that I want it to be, and then we got a little scrap left over. So it, the little tag dies, if you end up with one that is long like that, you don't want it that long. Um, it's super easy to cut it down to the size that you want it to be. All right, I have got some white Baker's Twine from the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack, and I'm going to do my best to tie a bow. <laughs> sometimes they work out well on screen, and sometimes not as well as they could. Um, so I'm going to tie it up here at the top of my tag, do my two little loops, wrap it around, pull it, eh, not terrible. Needs to do, a, we need to do a little wiggling around, but it's not terrible. All right, pull these back a little bit, tighten it up, and I think we're going to call that good. So I'm going to take that and then use a couple Stampin' Dimensionals to adhere that to the card front. If I can find my, oh, there they are. And stick this down here. Uh, I think we'll put, the, whoops, you know what? This one I need to put over on the other side. Put this one down here. And then I'm actually gonna take a glue dot and stick it up here because this side is gonna be kind of overlapping my, this part that's already on Stampin' Dimensionals. So it'll be stuck to the, um, the foil sheet instead of the uh, Stampin' Dimensional. So I'm just gonna grab a little glue dot Stick that up here on the corner. And then we'll use the dimensionals to stick the rest of it to the card front, but that little piece um, will be stuck down with the glue dot. All right. And I wanted it to look like it was sort of attached to the, the gumball machine. Again, I don't know how successful I was in that, but I thought it looked kind of cute that way. All right, I'm gonna trim up because it looks like I've got one of these that's a little longer than the other. So I'm gonna trim it up a little bit, try to get them somewhat even. And that's kind of it for the card front. So super easy and I think it's super cute with a little shaker <laughs> in it. And this one I got a little overzealous with my filling on. Um, this one I got a little less, so you can see a little bit more of the background on it. And I actually think I, look, I like the look of it better with a few less gumballs because, you know, <laughs> more is usually better but not necessarily I think when it comes to the gumball machine um, so I do like the look of it where it's a little so only fill it about half full don't do I did about three quarters and then some <laughs> so don't do, don't do what I did on the first one fill it about half full and I think you'll be happier with it all right the inside of the card I kept super simple because I figured I was going to have you here forever and it's already been 40 minutes so it has been a long time <laughs> and um, I've got a piece of basic white cardstock this is cut to four by five and a quarter real red ink and then there's just a single little gumball machine in um, that is in the stamp set again the stamp set's called gumball greetings and if I haven't said it already this will all be available beginning January 4th um, so the new catalog kickoff starts then new catalog ordering so I'm very excited about that and looking forward to you all being able to order this um, if you're not a demonstrator you can get it starting on January 4th 
All right, so got that stamped on there. Gonna do a little bit of um, stamp and seal. And we'll adhere that to the inside of the card and then we'll be all done. All right, there we go. So again, I kept the inside a little more without another sentiment in it. I can always add a sentiment in later if I wanna do a specific birthday one, um, but just left it a little more open so that I could use it for whatever I wanted to. And do a little crease with the bone folder and we're gonna be all done for today. So there you go. All right, all the details again will be posted on my blog tomorrow, which is stampathamyk.com. I will add a direct link to the blog post once it goes live. Um, so thanks so much for uh, joining me today and listening for this whole time. And I'm allowed to go a little longer. All right, I like that, Karen. <laughs> so um, again, all of this will be available um, beginning on January 4th. So the, the Gumball Greetings stamp set bundle um, and the little shaker domes and all the pieces that go with it um, will all be available on January 4th. The designer series paper that I used on here, this is two different patterns, obviously, but they're from the same pack. Um, they're from the Rainbows and Sunshine a six by six designer series paper. And that will be a free item that you can get with an order of $50 or greater, again, starting on January 4th. So thanks for joining. I will plan to be live on my Facebook page. Um, I'll probably be going live a little early on Tuesday just because we have, um, I need to get my daughter off the bus. But um, so probably going to be going live about 1.45 ish on uh, Tuesday. And then I'll be back here live on YouTube around two o'clock Eastern time next week, Friday. Thanks so much for joining. Have a wonderful, happy new year. Be safe if you're out celebrating. Um, if you're staying home like me, uh, get in your comfy jammies and, you know, watch the ball drop from your living room. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a good weekend and we'll chat soon.